Hi there, it's Gabriel here from PartClimb.com and in today's video we're going to talk about the standard instrumental departure, also called SID. By the end of this video you will know what an SID is, how to read an SID chart and how does a professional pilot fly an SID. I've been flying as a professional pilot for more than 10 years and flying for more than 15 years, so I've been reading these charts every day many many times. So without further ado, let's dive into it. As you can see here on the left there is a uh, SID chart of uh, uh, Sp Spanish airports, is a Jepsen SID chart and this chart is out of date, so it's not good for operations, uh, operational purposes, it's only for training and illustrations, but it's still the same. The new, uh, the updated chart it will look pretty much the same and once you know how to read this chart you will be able to read all the charts around the world. So once you know how to read this chart you will be able to read the New York uh, Standard Instrumental Departure chart, the Paris Standard Instrumental Departure chart and so on. So let's see how uh, to read, let's analyze this chart and let's learn how to read it. The SID is, is divided into three big, uh, into three big uh, boxes. The first one is the briefing information, which is this part here. The second one is the graphic, which is this part here. And the last one is the climb and routing instructions, which is this part here. Okay, so already we know that it has got three parts. The first part, if you go from the left to the right, from the top to the bottom, we will know that uh, it has got the ICAO identification uh, of the airport and IAT identification, airport identifications. As well, we've got some name that uh, the, the airport, the actual airport name, Santiago. Then on the right, we've got the Jepsen, which is the, uh, the basically the chart who made, who made this chart. And then we have a date here, which is the 3rd of February 12th, and this is uh, when this chart has been revised the last time. This is at, at, at 10 slash 3 Bravo is basically the index of this chart because each airport has got is has got kind of a booklet where you can actually find the information with, a, with an index. So if you need to know where this chart is instead of going through the booklet and looking at each page every time you just go and look for the name for example of these uh, departures here and you will know exactly that this is an 10 3 Bravo. Okay, so it's, like, it's, it's kind of a manual. Instead, instead, if you want to know something inside a manual, you don't go page by page and look for the thing that you need, but you go in the index and you will search the, import, the information that you need. On the here, on the uh, black box, it says effective on the 9th of February. This is very important because before this date, you, can you, you cannot use this chart because it's not effective yet. So it is important, let's say we are flying on the 1st of February, you cannot use this chart, but if you are on the 10th of February, this chart is applicable to you. And then here again, we've got some information about the airport, Santiago, which is in Spain, and then the name of the procedure, SID. So let's go into the actual chart. The chart says, airport elevation 1213. This is the Santiago airport elevation. Then we have transition level by ATC. This is always like that because it changed um, depending on the QNH. We've got the transition altitude, which is fixed, is 6,000 feet for this uh, airport. And then we have some information that says expect closing obstacles. So it's already telling us some information. Okay. Then here on the right, we've got the minimum sector altitude, as you can read here, MSA which is based on Santiago VOR. What does it mean? It means that in the center we've got the Santiago VOR, Sierra Tango Golf, which is this, as you can see here, Sierra Tango Golf. You have to think these numbers are minimum sector altitude, that means that we have 1000 feet of clearance from the obstacles. So this is a minimum altitude that we can fly in this sector in order to make sure that we've got at least 1000 feet of clearance from the obstacles. So if basically we take this picture, we put it over here on top, we will see that from this part, so the north to the east, we've got a 4,000 feet minimum sector altitude. In this part here, we've got 5,500 feet minimum sector altitude. In this part here, we've got 5,000 feet minimum sector altitude. And in this part here, we've got 4,000 feet minimum sector altitude. As you can see here already, the north part of the airport has got a lower terrain compared to the south of the airport because in the south we've got 5,000 in this part here and 5,500 feet 
uh, in this part here, the southeast. So what is an MSA? MSA basically takes, in this case, the Sierra Tango Golf VR, which is this one, and you have to imagine that this circle is has a 25 nautical miles range. So from the center all the way down here is 25 nautical miles. So this, inside the 25 nautical miles area, we've got at least 1,000 feet of terrain clearance depending on the sector. So if you're coming here, you need to maintain at least 5,000 feet when you are outside and a, a specified instrument route. But we're gonna talk about that later. So then, if we go again from the top, we can read all the names of the SIDs. So what happens is that the pilot, the FR pilot, will know from which SID he has to fly. So he's gonna go here and check that the chart is correct by looking at the uh, SID name. So let's say for us today we want to fly the Roxer 1 Alpha. Okay, so this is the full name, this is a, a, a name that you can find in the booklet of the chart, and this Roxa 1 Alpha, as you can see, there is a little bit of, uh, there is one letter missing, is that this is the database name. So basically, this is the data, the name that the pilot will find in his aircraft, if he has a SID database that allows him to fly, okay, using the FMC. So, but the name, the full name is Roxa 1 Alpha. There may be occasions where it's called, for example, uh, has a big name, long, long, long name, and then you find that the code that the pilot has in his FMC is completely different compared to the name of the SID. It's very rare, but can happen, okay? But normally they are all the same. As you can see at Roxer 1 Alpha, the pilot will find in his FMC the, the name Roxer 1 Alpha. Here, Ro Ro Roxer 2 Bravo, Roxer 2 Bravo, Turo 1 Alpha, Turo. You see, there is a little bit of difference, but it's still the same. But this is why we've got this, in order to make sure that we know exactly which SID we are selecting in our FMC. If we go down, we've got the, the, the graphic part of it, and this is very intuitive, okay? It's made very easy in order to make sure that the pilots are able to read them even during flights, because what happens is that a pilot flying in IFR, he will study the chart first, then he's gonna go into the plane, he's gonna prepare the plane, he's gonna brief the, uh, the colleague, or if he's alone, he's gonna brief himself, and then once he's flying, he's constantly cross-checking that the aircraft is actually doing what is required to do. For us, for example, that we want to fly the uh, Roxer 1 Alpha, which is this SID here, okay? He has to depart from the airport, which is this white line here, go all the way down, do a left turn, go all the way up, do a right turn, and then go inbound Roxer, okay? So as you can see, the name of this SID takes, uh, is, uh, is basically the waypoint that's uh, at the end of the SID. So in this case, our target is to fly over Roxer, as you can see we've got the Roxer 1 Alpha and the Roxer 2 Bravo. It's quite uh, intuitive because from the airport to Roxer we have to fly the Roxer's SIDs, but if you want to fly to Turon, let's say we want to go south instead of going east, we need to fly either the Turon 1 Alpha or the Turon 2 Bravo. So, as you can see the SID takes the name of the last waypoint. One question that you can ask, what happens if you want to fly uh, north? There, there, there are other SIDs of this airport that will allow you to fly north, okay? So you have to find an SID that flies north if you want to fly west. There are other SIDs that are in sequence. Maybe in the next page, you can find the SID that goes to the west, for example. But let's get focused on the Roxer, uh, Roxer 1 Alpha departure. So here as well, from the beginning, you can, you can really see that the, if, if we zoom in a little bit, you can really see that from the from the runway, okay, the pilot has to go straight ahead until 5.0 DME, Sierra Tango Golf, of course, then is uh, a left turn onto the 016 heading, Hotel, Hotel Delta Golf says it means heading, all the way up to intercept and follow this 076 from the Santiago uh, Sierra Tango Golf uh, VOR, then right turn and follow this Sierra Tango Golf all the way down all, until 50 nautical miles on the radial 073. And once he, he knows that he's on the radial 073 and a 50 nautical miles, he will know exactly that he's over uh, Roxer. Okay? So this is the part of the route. So the pilot knows that on the runway he takes off, he has got the DME selected with the with the with the distance information and if you are uh, to get the information about the radials so what will happen is that it's gonna fly straight ahead five nautical miles 
left hand is gonna put 0, uh, 1, 6 on his heading and then once he intercepts the radial 0, 73 he will fly all the way down on that radial for 50 miles outbound the Sierra Tango of Timmy and once he's at that radial 50 miles he's over Roxer and another thing that a pilot has to comply with is not only the route he has to comply as well with the minimum altitude restrictions. As you can see here, as you can see here, is a Roxer One Alpha says turn at or above 1,800 feet. That means that you cannot turn before if you are, if you get to the five nautical miles point and you're not 1,800 feet, you cannot turn to the left. Okay. Then we have another restriction here says maximum 220 uh, kiloton, which is not okay. So this is. Uh, for small airplanes, it's not a big deal, but for example, I fly the Boeing 737, and sometimes if you're accelerating here, you can be already above uh, 220 knots. Then we've got, we fly, there is no restrictions, and then once we arrive over, over the last waypoint, we see that we've got a restriction at or about 6,000 feet, okay? So, how do I know that they're gonna be at 1,800 feet here, minimum, or 6,000 feet there? So what do you have to know is a minimum uh, uh, climb gradient, okay? So you have to know your, the performance of your plane, so you have to know uh, how many feet per minute you can climb during your SID. So, because then oh, here on the, on the bottom of the chart, when we've got attitude restrictions, you will find that a minimum climb gradient required. So what it says, this SID requires a minimum climb gradient of 4.3% up to 3,000 feet. So that means that you have to be able to maintain this 4.3 claim gradient uh, percent minimum all the way up to 3,000 feet. How do I know? Because on board we don't have a claim gradient indicator, we only have a vertical speed indicator. So how do I know that I'm uh, keeping this 4.3% claim gradient? If you look just below that, depending on your ground speed in knots, so you should know that because you know your aircraft and the weather conditions of the day, you will find the vertical, uh, the feet per minute, depending on your speed. So let's say you're flying an aircraft that climbs, can climb at 150 knots, he has to be able to maintain at least 653 feet, because this will provide a 4.3% uh, uh, climb gradient. For example, normally on the Boeing 737 in Thunder we climb at around 200 knots, and we know that in order to keep 4.3% is 871 feet. It's very easy, it's very doable for the Boeing 737 even with max, uh, maximum load. So as a pilot, you know your aircraft, you should know, if you don't know what your minimum climb gradient is, check the performances of the plane and you will find in the manual there. But especially the more experience you get on the plane, the easier for you will be to know if that is a doable SID or not. Normally, as a, from my experience, when I fly an SID on the Boeing, with the Boeing 737, anything below 9%, I don't even look at it because I know the plane is very well capable to do that. When you see minimum current gain of 10% or more, then it's when you really need to start thinking about it. So then, this is the graphic part. As you can see here, again, every SID, we just analyzed this Roxer one alpha graphic part, okay? But if you take the next, the, the Roxer 2 Bravo SID, it's basically the same. As you can see, we have a, a 2.6 nautical miles DME. It's a right turn here, and we have to select to put uh, one, one, one degrees on heading all the way down to intercept the 4076 and then fly inbound Roxer, okay? So once you know how to read one SID, you will be able to read all the other SIDs. There, really, there, really, there is no secret here, okay? And uh, one thing that you might know, you might not know, is that we have different SIDs because depending on the weather conditions, you might take off from one runway or the other runway. Okay, because if you have headwind coming from the no from the north, let's say, what happens is that we have to take off from the south runway to the north. So we have to go into this direction. So we need an SID that allows us to take off from here and then go inbound rocks. And vice versa is also is also true. So that's why we've got two SIDs for each point because it's one for the southerly runway in this case and one for the north uh, northerly runway. All right. So I hope this is clear. We can go. We can scroll down. Here we go. So on the last part, as we said, we've got the climb and routing instructions. So the climb and routing instructions basically what they do. They basically tell you by words what we just said. So they take 
give me a second, they take this SID, for example, and they put it in words, okay? So let's say the Roxer 1 Alpha, the Roxer 1 Alpha says runway 16. So it's telling us that it is an SID that departs for, that is used on, for runway 16. The routing is climb to Sierra Tango 5 DME, and it's exactly like this. So climb straight ahead 5 DME. Then it's a left turn 01680. As you can see here, it's a left turn 01680. Intercept Santiago Radial 073, which is this one here, so right 073 to Roxer. And Roxer, we saw that was the point in here. Okay, so the routing part it really tells you by letter what you have to do. Okay, but it doesn't tell you which altitude restrictions you've got. So it's very important that you read this, but always make sure that you keep your mind that when you are still have speed and altitude restrictions along your SID. What you want to do is to cross-check on your, on your uh, like in my case, on the FMC of the plane, because I'm flying 737, that all these things make sense compared to the FMC. What I normally do, I arrive on board, I load the FMC with the route because it's like a computer that you just tell him that you want to fly this Roxer 1 Alpha. And it will pop up all the points and all the restrictions. You know, I'm gonna have my computer, it's, it's gonna tell you, okay, the computer will tell me that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go straight at five miles, left turn 016, intercept 073, and then fly to Roxel. And that's exactly what I can read in the computer. So it is important that you cross check your computer with these uh, information that you've got, graphic or routing, which is pretty much the same. You have to go on the graphic because, as well, you have speed and other restrictions, but you want to go to the Texas as well to make sure that everything is clean. If you, if you fly a, a normal aircraft, let's say not a sophisticated aircraft, a Piper, a Cessna, some, something with, that's not equipped with FMC, you really need to do all these things by yourself, okay? So it is important that you really read this part to make sure that it's clear to you in your mind, but then once you fly normal, you only look at here, okay? So it's, it's more the graphic thing because it's very easy to grab the information. All right, so that's the end of the SID video for today. I hope that is clear. If you have any question, leave a comment below. And if you like the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, you can go to paroclimb.com and uh, uh, go around the, 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 the website where you can, you, subs you can subscribe for free pilot training content. Thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.